when we look at uh, populations, one of the uh, challenges that we face in society is the aging society. Um, and the fact that uh, the number of new people coming, being born, um, number of people in employment um, in proportion to people, retired people, is, is getting smaller and smaller, uh, which means that uh, the older population uh, and the retirement age, they're supported by uh, working people. Um, do you see this phenomena in, in, in other countries? I mean, is it, is it the fact that China still has a young population, that they're, they're, they're consumers and they're producers? Does that give them some kind of economic advantage? It's a very short-lived advantage because they had the one-child policy for 30 years, and that led to an inevitable reduction in their populations and an increasingly and fast, rapidly aging population. So they may have lots of young people now, and they've liberalized that now completely, of course, but they will have a huge battle on their hands. I think the forecast is over the next 70 years that they will halve their population. So they'll go from 1.4 billion to about 730 million. So I mean, a, 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 an economy where you're, you're potentially losing 700 million people, that's bigger than the size of Europe, which is 500 million people. So China is by no means certain to maintain that position as we go forward, unless it equally automates, which by the way, it is doing. So, you know, in the US, it's about 300 million, and that's roughly going to stay the same. Europe, we're 43, getting ready for a midlife crisis, and India's average age is 25, and they're just getting ready to go to work. So the dynamics around age are phenomenal. Uh, and increasingly, machines in, in aging populations, such as Europe, we, we will need machines to generate the wealth, and we'll need some way of sharing that wealth, not through taxation, or welfare, because they're quite pejorative terms, then they don't drive the right behavior. So we need some way to share wealth generated by capital amongst populations uh, and give people the dignity of work at the same time um, so that we change uh, how we share work and how we do work. Hmm. I think I'm going to come on to the back touch in a minute, but I just want to ask you a, a few questions about the, the key technologies that you see being as most significant I realise there's a cocktail of technology and enabling technologies uh, that makes things possible. What, but what are the most critical technologies that you see impacting the future of work? Well, I mean, first and foremost, currently at the top of our agenda right now is artificial intelligence. Um, it's been creeping up on us for a little while, and it's the number one uh, driver. And the, I'll tell you why that is. It's, it's In the past, we automated manual work, and there wasn't really much of a fuss about that. We brought cranes and diggers and all sorts of mechanical devices to make us much more productive on the land. Uh, and now almost no one works on the land because of the machinery we put in place. Uh, we did that for clerical workers in the 50s with data processing, if you remember that. And of course, we in management decision-making tools we put in place, we, we've done that a lot to managers. But actually, this is the first time ever we've, in, we've employed technology to remove tasks from professional, highly skilled knowledge workers. And that's the real challenge that we face in our economies. We've always held these up to be the goal, the gold standard of, of work for people to aspire to and to, to educate themselves to become performant in. And of course, now in one fell swoop, we can see, and we've known it for a long time, by the way, but we can actually see now these tools that are proliferating that can outsmart the smartest thinkers in their field. And that's really going to have a huge effect. But let me just very, very briefly say, it's not the only tool that's going to change the way we work. The Internet of Things are devices that sense everything around us, you know, from substrate to buildings, to atmosphere, to earth. You know, we, we're going to have an awful lot of those fairly soon. And that information is going to change the whole nature of, of, of who does the work and what sort of work we do. Um, not only that, you know, 5 and 6G communications, and and small satellites you know i think we've got four thousand in space right now um satellites and by the end of this decade we'll have a hundred thousand satellites so pervasive high-speed connection anywhere in the world and the way we organize ourselves organize ourselves and the data we use is going to change a lot of people's work and and make a lot of work especially for those in the middle of any process um redundant although it'll make people who are in the process is much more performant so it does both those things at the same time, if you like. Mm. Uh, I, I noticed that, that today we, we are starting to see a bit of industrial in, uh, unrest from certain uh, industry sectors, you know, the nurses, the doctors, the teachers. 
um, railway unions, uh, they're all uh, starting to line up um, and demand more income. Now, in, in the past, over the last 40 or 50 years, uh, we, we've become quite a hierarchical society where um, our, our income, um, what, what, what we earn in our jobs has been dependent upon our experience and our qualifications, things we've acquired. Now, all of a sudden, with AI and some of these other technologies, um, that's, is that going to be completely uh, de devalued because it's accessible to, to anybody? I don't think every every job would be, would be devalued, but components and tasks within our job role will be performed better by new tools. And this is the issue. It's not that they'll be performed as well. They'll be done better than we can do ourselves. So we've got to, in actually quite a short order, this is the key issue, we've got to, in quite a short order, come to terms with the capabilities of these tools, and they're improving all the time. I mean, right now we know about ChatGPT, GPT 3.5, Oh, okay, they've hit the, the current consciousness, which is exciting. But, you know, there's, there's about 460 companies producing generative AI tools today that have all been invested in. So there is an enormous wave of capability coming at um, components of our work. And the trick is to, to become cognizant of what these tools do and augment them with what you're good at as human beings. And by the way, we're still incredibly well needed in, in the whole process because of a lot of different skills, which I'm sure we'll come on to. But the um, many many things we do now will be done better. And, and I, I have to tell you, you brought up, you know, industrial dispute. If, if the history is anything to go by, we will have enormous pushback, but this time from professional bodies. So maybe it'll be health service bodies, the BMA has become a bit more militant recently. Um, them and many others um, could well find themselves um, displaced to a great degree if they haven't got on top of what these tools can do. Mm. Well, I, I can't help but agree with you, but I think one of the ironies that I observe is that if you listen to nurses, uh, well, in nurses in particular, uh, one of their complaints is that they, they don't have access to enough technology. Um, their job is, is too stressful be, because there isn't the right kind of technology that will help them. Well, that's very true. I mean, you've only got to spend a little bit of time in hospital uh, visiting or, or um, you know, needing to be there. And you'll see that nurses are doing an awful lot of typing and keying in of information around the nurse station, not attending to patients or the things that they really want to attend to. So the way we've applied IT in these environments has been appalling. I mean, it really has since many attempts have been to automate and streamline the whole health service um, rather than biting it off in small chunks which I suspect would, would have produced probably a better result by now, um, with, a, with a, a firmer, clearer view of the architecture needed to knit things together. But, you know, they do need, I mean, these, these professionals do need an awful lot of cognizant, capable, you know, self-defining technology to alleviate them of an awful lot of the drudgery of doing risk assessments and document taking when tools and IoT devices can do all that for them. So they're right. Mm -hmm. they, they, they should be complaining about that. We do need them to be more productive and we do need to spend most of their human uh, endeavour with patients because that's where they really can excel. Mm -hmm.